entrepreneurial conversation in the world ever we're joined here by a couple of very 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 special entrepreneurs um very close to our hearts from all around the world and we're ready to just um create that space where you know you can connect with us for an hour learn more about entrepreneurship learn more about each other if you're wondering what you're doing you're watching the coffee shop conversation show I am Nistine. And that would make me Peter. We are the co-founders of Explore ProTech Entrepreneurial Haven. So if you haven't heard about it yet, we run an entrepreneurial haven. It's a home for entrepreneurs. It's a place where entrepreneurs around the world can come to, where they can meet with other supportive entrepreneurs. It's where we connect on a heart level. It's where we share our dreams and our realities and we make the two come together. So we're so excited to have you here. We've been doing this Coffee Shop Conversations show for just over three years now. Um, and it's been absolutely amazing. Just the things that we've learned, mm. the progress that we've made. We've been on some amazing journeys. Yeah, and I think a lot, a lot of it is just you know, taking that kind of fear factor out of entrepreneurship. Like when I first got into entrepreneurship, I kind of felt like, right, you're an entrepreneur, you should know everything. Like the one day I wasn't an entrepreneur and the next day it's like, you're an entrepreneur now, Nestine, you should know everything. And the reality is just, that's just not real. You know, you can't, you can't just take a course or expect yourself to know everything. Like, yes, if you want to be successful in business, you should probably learn everything. <laughs> But the best, quickest way to do that is to surround yourself with successful people, entrepreneurs that have done it, that are doing it, that are ready to share what they are up to, what they are doing. And then sometimes we just share the mistakes we made. You know, if we have six and, people on the screen and, and, we've made a few. and each of us <laughs> shares one mistake, that's like six mistakes that you don't need to make, which is like, you're welcome. <laughs> just as a side note. This is going to be a conversation between seasoned entrepreneurs from around the world. And some of us are, have made it. Some of us are still on the journey. Some of us are starting out. That's the great thing. We're just entrepreneurs. So if anybody is saying something that you're like, oh my goodness me, I can relate to that. Or actually, I need to know more about that. Or this person has answered my question. The links will be in the, script, in the description. Just reach out and go, hey, I saw you on the show. Let's have a conversation. Mm -hmm. Relationship, 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 that's where it starts. Yeah. Just reach out and say, hi. We've done all the legwork for you. You are welcome. It takes forever to get these amazing people to talk to you, okay, <laughs> to open up. Like you don't just walk into Mr. Levy down the street and go like, hey, Mr. Levy, you want to just tell me everything I should know? No, you develop that relationship. So we've done that for you. Now you get to chat to Mr. Levy once a week, and then you can reach out and say, hey, I saw you on the show. Can we please connect? And um, yeah, so feel free to engage in the chat. We are watching it, and we are here for you, and we're ready to make this one of your most amazing hours of your life. Okay, so getting off the Raven rant for today, today's topic is scaling your business, the how and the when. Okay, so some of us might not even be there yet, 
some of us are getting there. Some of us might be doing it and we have no clue what we're doing. Hands up if you're one of those. <laughs> but that's why we need to talk about it, right? So we have some amazing people on the call. I'm going to invite our entrepreneurs on the call. If you're ready to get involved in the conversation and say something epic or not that epic, but just share some of your thoughts uh, on the topic. Just to let you know that sometimes a very well-placed question is better than an answer. Yeah, please just put up your hand like so and we'll cue you into the conversation. From my side, um, I mean, we've kind of been... Scaled from day one. Because I am kind of attached to Peter. <laughs> <laughs> That's why, like, I had no choice. Peter builds through creating peeps. And so different entrepreneurs, you know, build in different ways. So Peter, when he started a business, he was like, let me put together a team. And I was like, good luck with that. I've tried that. It's difficult. And um, But one of the things that I can tell you from an experience, you know, in trying to scale and then also auditing a lot of businesses that are in the scaling process, um, if you you have to figure out and you guys can please come in on this as well you have to figure out your product market fit first i think if you're thinking of scaling and especially if you're thinking of scaling and leveraging by adding financial capital and whether it's your own or an investors you gotta know that you've got a product market fit a winning concept something that's actually gonna make money yeah. Like, it's very, very difficult if you're in that stage where you're still innovating, you haven't mm. properly tasted, you haven't properly researched, you know, you're still kind of finding the groove, finding your ideal clients, like throwing money at that point and trying to scale from there becomes very, very difficult. Risky. So it is It's definitely worth it. And this is my opinion. It's mm. definitely worth taking your time doing the proper research and making sure that you find that winning recipe where you're like okay so if i find this type of person talk to them in this way put them through this process then on the other side i emerge with this much money now the second thing that i learned or like after that is we got there and then we were like this is fantastic let's just go for it throw as much money as you can so no <laughs> So even once you have your product market fit and you figured out your winning recipe and your winning formula, after that, you need to figure out what is your customer acquisition cost. Because you need to know if I put this much into this winning formula, I'm going to emerge with this much and it's going to take this long. So in our case, we knew our business, but we ne neglected to take into account that our um our sales cycle is quite long. If we put money in on this side, we might only see a return on that six months later, which, you know, depending on how much money you're dealing with, it, it, it kind of gets a little bit rough. It can, it can get rough. <laughs> so don't make that mistake. So I think that's my second great tip mm -hmm. for if you're scaling. So even if you're ready to scale, and make sure that you're managing that cash and that you're taking into account, you need to know exactly processes your client acquisition costs and all the metrics to be able to figure out how much money do i put in this side how much do i get out that side yeah um, if you are an entrepreneur like most there are things that we know a lot about and there are things that we know nothing about and that's okay there are people that know the things that we don't know we just need to be talking to them so my response to the scaling process is when they say do your homework do we even know what that homework is do we know what we need to know or are we guessing because this is not a time to be guessing especially when you're working with finances whether it be your own or somebody else's um this is a time to know what you need to know and know who knows about that because those are the people to speak to, which is why we have business coaches, which is why we have, we have that guidance. So this would be the time when, when we say, do your homework, we don't necessarily mean go and find out all the things that you need to know, go and speak to the people that have done it before mm -hmm. that know the risks that know the chances you're about to take and tell you exactly what information you 
need to have, how to get that information, how to pull it all together. These are things that even myself, if I'm in that space, I'm going to go find the person I need to talk to and get the guidance I need. I am not a professional at everything. But gets, contrary to popular belief. It gets, <laughs> it gets so overwhelming and exciting in entrepreneurship, right? But I think that's one of the things that Peter taught me that's really gold. Like I used to think like an entrepreneur, you just, you're an entrepreneur, you got to pretend, you got to make decisions. Like now we make a decision, we go that way. You know, people kind of got to know me like that. And now I've kind of learned before you make a big decision, have a cup of coffee with Mr. Levy. <laughs> Talk to Hendrik, call Kenton, you know, discuss with Rita. Yeah, if, the, if this process is going to drive me over the edge and I'm going to fall apart, have Rita in your corner, ready and waiting. <laughs> Rita, we're going to need some therapy after this decision goes wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so I think that was very, very valuable. I'm very, very keen to hear what the rest of you have to say on the whole scaling, how and why thing and when. So Carolyn, you're an amazing, amazing leadership coach. Um, let's hear from you. I can't wait to hear what you have to say. Uh, two things came to mind for me. Like one is that, first of all, ask yourself if you really want and need to scale. Because a lot of people, they're just like, oh, I have to grow. I have to grow. It's what entrepreneurs do. You know, they grow. And it's like, well, maybe you're not maybe that's not what you do you know um so just ask yourself really why are you attempting this in the first place and then uh, the second thing is that there needs to be an awareness that um scaling if it happens fast it's a real um it's, it's quite uh, risky for your for your leadership and your culture you know there's a lot that needs to develop you your leadership needs to evolve if you have a company of like 20 people, you need a different leadership style from when you have a company with 100 people. I've seen some of my clients grow very fast and and then the CEO is sometimes like really lost, you know, suddenly it's like, whoa, what I used to do just doesn't work anymore, you know, because now I can't talk to everyone personally anymore. Now I need a different system, you know. Um, so it's uh, really you have to prepare your leadership and your culture for a growth spurt if you want to attend that. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. That's valuable advice. Thank you so much, Carolyn. Um, I love the fact that you mentioned culture in that process. So important. Like I can I cannot emphasize how important that is. Um, yeah, you probably want to do a culture audit, just get a leadership coach involved to do an audit to even tell you, like, is your culture even ready to scale? Because you want those cornerstone yeah. people in place and the people ready to take on more with you. Otherwise, you're just like me and you're like, head first into a problem. And then you're like, where, where are you guys? And they're like, you didn't tell us we're going that way. I'm like, you must read my mind. So, yeah, thank you so much, Carolyn. Really appreciate that. Um, Carolyn, tell us quickly before we move on to the next uh, speaker, uh, your business, and what you do, what you're up to. Okay, so I'm, I'm actually, I um, found something new that I want to try, and so I'm going to do that today. Um, so, uh, yeah, I've been doing this for a long time, but I've never actually called it that, but it's about leading with love. And I think it's really important that we bring that into business. And, you know, some people feel a bit sort of funny about it. And uh, why would you, you know, why would you talk about love when you talk about business? But the, the, the problem is we talk about fear. We, we come from fear a lot of the time when we lead. And that doesn't make very, that doesn't um, enable us to make very good decisions. So if you're coming from love, then you're coming from trust. You're coming from surrender. You're coming from, uh, courage you know and that enables you to make much better decisions so um yeah so i'm a coach and i'm i would like to help people to bring more love into their business that is epic i think you're gonna love speaking to mr Levy. oh yes yeah for sure <laughs> awesome hendrik let's throw you into the conversation why not are you going to do a magic trick while you talk I'm sorry. Uh, uh, we can't hear we can't, you. We can't I'm not. Hear you. 
Not sure why your sound isn't working. Is it, is it theatrical? No, I don't think we're playing charade. It's a mime. Is that better? Um, yes, well done. Look, I was muted. I was magic, and now I can speak. It's magic. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my two cents worth is um, Ethan and I are learning by doing. Uh, we have no entrepreneurial experience. We come from an artistic background, and we're probably the worst entrepreneurs in the world because we always focus on the creative side and not on the business side. And I said to him today, look, we've got to really tackle the, the bull by the horns. This year has been very slow in starting for us. Um, but it's a good thing. You know, we've been talking about scaling for a while, but actually we're still in the tasting phase. And we're now actually at the point where we are distilling our message and our product and our offering. And it's becoming much more clear as to exactly what it is that we do. When we started out, I think we had something like 100 products and we've now distilled it down to really just one. Um, nice. So that's, that's one thing. Um, so I think in order to scale up, you've got to first scale down. You've got to scale down your offering. You've got to scale down... Um, you know, what, what it is that uh, you understand that your clients want from you. Um, and that still needs to be tested, though. You know, when we, uh, we're busy redesigning our website at the moment, and um, um, I, I think that will help a lot in, in making the message much clearer, uh, not only for ourselves, but, but for our clients. So I'm really glad we haven't put any money into this company yet because it would have been all wasted by now. Um, uh, that investment's probably only a year away, I suppose, because... Um, I remember a few coffee shops away when people were talking about successes and I was asking a question, how long did it take for you to, to actually become a success? And people said between three to five years before they really got big clients and, and started making uh, a living out of it. So, so we're, still, we're still a year or so away from that, which is a good thing. That gives us the rest of this year to, to really test it out and, and see. Uh, and I think we can probably scale some more. more. You can downscale some more and niche some more. I, I, in my book, I talk about uh, niching down for your podcast. And this is something that I felt like, look, if I can write about it, maybe I should do it for my business as well. So we're niching down even more and seeing who that really, uh, who that customer is that we that, that we really are targeting. And, and it's slowly but surely uh, becoming more clear. So that's my two cents worth. I'm Andrew from Bed Media. We help clients produce podcasts, especially beginners who don't know how to do, to do it. It's a great book, and it's coming soon to an online bookshop near you. Uh, so just hang on. I'll let you know uh, all those links as soon as it's up and running. I will tell you guys, if you want to sound like you're on top billing, which who doesn't want to do that? <laughs> you have to make a podcast with Hendrik and Ethan. They are incredible. I sound so professional. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to like take it even one step further, uh, like we did, get your um, audio marketing developed by Kenton first and then go to Hendrik and Ethan. And that turns out freaking incredible. In terms of scaling, um, that is very, very valuable advice, Hendrik. And I think I'm also one of the culprits there because I kind of got into business and two months later I was like, I'm scaling. <laughs> That's just kind of my personality, you know, and I didn't even realize how much I still had to learn, how much I still had to taste, how much I still had to research. What I will say is the way it looks to me, I think um, that testing journey is very much accelerated when you're working in a community like Explore Project. Because we're doing so many energy exchanges, so many collaborations, um, it's very, it's it's a lot quicker to kind of figure out what doesn't work, which is really what you need to do as an entrepreneur before you're ready to scale. You kind of got to figure out what doesn't work. You know, like Edison tested the light bulb and what he found like 365 ways not to make a light bulb. I think that's kind of what entrepreneurship is like. But yeah. someone else that's also very much on the topic of um, you know, sometimes you got to step back in order to move forward. It's Mr. Levy. So I'm so, so excited to hear from Mr. Levy, our business coach, one of the most amazing, like this man. He's been involved in a lot of the successes in our space. Wow. He takes like baby entrepreneurs and grows them into like unstoppable. Yes. <laughs> 
unstoppable preneurs. I have so much respect for this man. So, Mr. Levy, can we please hear from you? Thanks for that, Justine. And yeah, it's just so awesome being in this space and there's so much learning here, but I, you know, the skating, what stands out for me and I love what Hendrix said is, you know, I think we must differentiate between building our business and skating our business. Um, and we'll only figure out how and when we should scale our business once we've built it. So, you know, your building, your building phase of building your business and growing it is you, you can do all the research and it's important to do the research. Like it's important to have a, a clear vision where you're going, have a strategy in place, how you're going to get there. But that's not a blueprint and it's not cast in stone. It's a reference point. And that's where you can reference to as your business, please God, grows. So you can reference to how you assumed you're going to get there and how are you going to get there now where your business is. So we need to take time to reflect, to reassess where our business is, to review where our business is. And that's incumbent on what uh, Carolyn said is that's where leadership steps in. So leaders don't know everything, but they have a huge impact on the people they're leading and they need to use them because for me, leadership is a team sport. And especially in today's world, because we live in such a fast-paced world. So the first thing is build your business towards, but understand where you're going to. So if you, if you want to build your business to a 10 million rand a year business, you know, understand what do you, when you get to 5 million, what do you need to get to that 5 million? When you get to the 5 million, test, are you at capacity? Okay. And if you are at full capacity, people-wise, resource system-wise, it's a sign that you're going to have to scale. Because you cannot run a 10 million rand business with the same amount of people you ran the 5 million rand business or resources. But, and I, I did this in my experience because I think we guilt, you know, as an entrepreneur, you get into your business and you want to grow it and then growth comes and you just, you're just like a bullet train. Eh? And then my bullet train hit the wall or it crashed. And that is a great learning. So, I think you have to build it and then also don't be scared to plateau because that's where the thinking and the preparation comes in for the next phase. And also, and when you're building it, you, with all the research, the market, you haven't tested the market yet. You've done it all on paper. There's a difference between, as I always say, Nestine, you know, that the textbook and reality. So once we start applying it, and test the market because we all believe that the market wants our products. We all believe, oh, everybody wants us. And we've got, we've all got something new to offer the market. But actually, the market will tell you that. So let's build it and have the patience to build it. And let the market tell you what's happening. How, how does the market respond to your services, to what you're offering? If you're an established business and you're ready to scale, just plateau a little bit and take that time to prepare for the scaling, just like we did when we had to take time to prepare to build our business. I hope that we did, that we took time and envisioned where we're going. We need to kind of uh, plateau. I would like to, if I can, just share with you just quickly, I'm going, or well, I'm asking you if I can, and then I'm just going to do it. But it won't take long. But this is, you know, we get to the, the building phase. We need to put this phase in and then go to the next phase and then put that phase in and then go to the next phase. These here are the phases that we normally leave out and yet they're the most important. We did it here. Why don't we do it here? So I think it's just being, and that's having, that's that roadmap. That's where the, the power of your strategic plan comes in. Is it something to reference to you? It tells you a story. And if Linda Dent was here, she would tell you, the numbers will tell you whether you should scale or not. And how much should you put in, invest into scaling? You know, and so you build it up, uh, you build it up slowly. Um, but slowly, yeah, is probably the right word. Anyway, that's 
what I wanted to share, and I, th um, I think it's a subject one can talk about for a lot longer than this, but there are other people here, so I'm not going to. And I'd love to hear what the input is because I got valuable input. And that's Stephen from Dare to Be Coaching and Beyond. Thank you. Elian, thank you so much, Mr. Levy. I think that sounds like such, um, you know, straightforward advice. Like, Nastine three years ago was like, yeah, okay, fine. But Nastine now is like, that plateau, you what I have to tell you, and Rita will probably go more into this, like when you're on that plateau, you're going to feel different things. Now, me personally, my personality feels we're not going fast enough. I absolutely hate this. It feels like we're going backwards. Like if we're not going forward a thousand kilometers an hour, then we must be going backwards. You're going to have to deal with that and figure that out. Um, because, and then probably work with someone like Mr. Levy that can tell you, mm. you know, actually you're not going backwards. It's normal. Like businesses get built this way. They don't get built like that. And that plateau is actually an opportunity, huge opportunity. But it doesn't feel like that. Because if you think of your business as a car, the going up and, and moving places, you are pedal to the floor, your motor is running, you're going, 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 going. When you plateau, it's an opportunity to stop, change your oil, get your tires, make sure there's water in the radiator, some coolant, Fix your wiper blades in case it rains. All those little maintenance things that things that you need to take into consideration so that the next phase when you actually start to move again, you are prepared and ready. And that's where it's important to have somebody that knows how to service your car. Somebody that understands that your car might need to be fixed or somebody that will tell you oh, your vehicle needs to be taken off the road. We need to rethink or rebuild completely. Let's take it apart. Let's put it back together. Let's fix it. Opportunity. Those are opportunities. Take advantage of them. If you think it's a space where you're not growing, not growing, not growing, then go to the drawing board and figure out why and use the opportunity to fix the vehicle you're using. That's another thing I just quickly want to add before we move on to Rita. Um, so get to know your suppliers, the people that you're going to need in order to be able to scale. Get to know them now already. Like you need to get to know them like from the beginning. Like Nestine also, like my personality is like right now, I only want to get to know customers. Like that's all I want to focus on. Do you know how valuable it is? And I'm so thankful that, that Peter has surrounded us with all the right people. How valuable it is to know a Mr. Levy. You pull onto your courses when you're like, oh, okay, the contract got accepted. Great. Who's going to teach this stuff? <laughs> Mr. Levy, because we already know him. You know, when you get into that space where you're like, what's hot right now? Podcasting. Make a freaking podcast. And you like start and you open that app and you're like, I don't know how to make a podcast. This sounds horrible. Knowing someone like Hendrik and Ethan. But the thing is like, you've already built those relationships. You know, you already have them. Now it's just a matter of going and saying, hey, we already know each other. We've already done like small like collaborations, maybe energy exchanges, whatever we've done. Can you just help us with this now? That, that is, that is the magic soul. That's pure gold. That's pure gold. Rita, let's move over to you. Misty, don't call me when everything goes wrong. I'm not <laughs> the emergency services. <laughs> you need to be in therapy up front. <laughs> And, and, and for me, there's an entrepreneur is an expert in a certain niche uh, area, which means that I don't have all the knowledge. That, mm. that is as simple as what it is. But I also have to build an ecosystem for my business. And to do that, I need to surround me with people that can help me build this ego, ecosystem. And, and, and that will vary from person to person. 
you know, it, it might mean you need a financial guy, it might mean marketing guy, a social media guy, what, whatever it is, a business coach, whatever it is, it doesn't, doesn't matter. But I, I want to agree with what uh, um, Stephen uh, said, is the foundation is critical. Now, if the foundation in your, your, your business is not working, my question to you is, is the foundation in your personal life work? Because those two are interlinked. And, and, and I've seen it, that the moment that the foundation in the personal life is cracked, it cracks the foundation in the business part of it as well. So how do I repair a cracked foundation? That's very, very hard work. That is really very hard work to fix that. But it can be done. It just depends on the, on the commitment that you are prepared to, 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 to put into it. Um, so what is scaling? And again, I think what, what Stephen said, you can't scale if that foundation is cracked. So does scaling mean for you climbing, flying, mounting, rise, rising, soaring, escalating, towering? Doesn't matter what it means to you. You need to find out exactly what it means to you and work according to that within your um, whatever you have got into your, within your ecosystem. Work with that. And it's trial and error. It's trial and error. You need to figure out what's working and what's not working. And, and that takes time. That's, that's not an overnight process. It really takes time. So, yeah, that's what I've got to say. It's Rita Skuman, Coaching with Hall. Rita, that deserves like a standing mm. ovation. Like, I'm like, you know, and typically me, I'm like scaling. We're going to give tips on this and this and cash flow and this and stuff. And I've completely forget that the thing that gets me every time is the personal foundation. And I've seen it in so many entrepreneurs. I see it in myself all the time. Sometimes even see it in, in Peter is that overwhelm, the anxiety, the poor coping skills, like those things, getting those things under control. Mm -hmm. the, the reality is, is that your biggest asset is yourself. Um, you've got to look after it. Um, and the people around you, if the people around you start to crack. You look after the people around you by looking after yourself first. That, that, that is so important. You, and people think that, especially like people pleasers, you please everybody else, please everybody else, please everybody else, neglect themselves, everything falls apart, and then everybody goes, but why aren't they helping me anymore? Why isn't that person helping me? Oh, because they fell apart because they spent too much time helping you and they didn't look after themselves at all. So by looking after yourself, you're actually putting others first. Looking after yourself. Um, you are your biggest asset. So when Rita talks about the foundation, or when Stephen talks about the foundation, and when Rita goes, the foundation is very important if it's cracked, and that can relate to your biggest asset, which is yourself. Do yourself a favor and spend the time working on yourself. That is putting others first. That is like... Oh, this, you see why I love these conversations. You see why you can't go a Monday without being on the show. I'm e sorry. Excuse me while I go focus on myself. <laughs> Peter, <laughs> just now. <laughs> Kenton, I am so, so excited to hear from you. I mean, from a record label producer, like you have so many balls in the air. Like, I don't even know how you do it. Like, please come into the conversation. Let's hear from you. What's your thoughts on scaling? Oh, hello, everybody. Man, there's been some incredible 
thing set around this room. It's so empowering and amazing. Like you said, and I've seen to be a part of these conversations. I'm so glad to be here as well. Um, I think Peter talked about it. Um, Stephen talked about it as well. Even Rita talked about it. Everyone has, you know, about, I mean, the culture aspect um, and yourself being so important. But one thing I've come to realize, and it was a hard pill for me to swallow is, you know, thinking I'm running a business when really I've just created a job for myself um, in the sense that I need myself, like my business can't run without me in it. So how is that really a business? How can I scale when I'm the one that needs to be doing the work? I need to be having these conversations. So for me, personally, it's about now expanding that team and building trust so I could trust someone to have the conversation that I would usually have with someone to, you know, have that initial meeting, that sit down, speak on behalf of Peach Jam, you know, other producers that can do the quality of work because, you know, ideally, it's not, you know, efficient for me to be involved in absolutely every moving part. Um, can't scale that way. So for me personally, you know, being a creative as well, that's been a, a, something that I've been overcoming. Um, but I'm finding ways to do it. And again, letting go of control and trusting people. And, you know, like, again, the culture, like, I feel like a company should have bring up, create legs of its own, become a life of its own. You know, this company stands for this. doesn't matter even the people involved. because so the people join that, they instantly become part of that culture and it becomes so strong and powerful. Um, so yeah, that's kind of uh, my, my foresight into that. Uh, I, I, I love that. Um, Just tell us quickly who you are and what you do, Kenton, because we know, but everyone else deserves to know. <laughs> My name is Kenton. I run Peach Jam Records, where we help, I help, we help <laughs> artists and businesses uh, create and establish their own unique sound so they can stand out in today's uh, crowded digital landscape. So again, if you love our tribe song, like Kenton literally created that from scratch. And it is absolutely, absolutely amazing. Like if you haven't found your signature sound yet, that's probably what's missing in your mm. life and your business. Thank you so much, Kington. Something that you mentioned, Kenton, which really sticks out for me is that um, getting yourself a job. Um, uh, that's no way to live. It really isn't. And uh, the, uh, let's be clear, there is a difference between solo entrepreneur starting to scale or a business that's been going for five to 10 years that's got 20 people starting to scale, or whether there's 100 people and they've been going for 10 years plus start going through the process of scaling there is a big difference between all three of those categories and then there are all the categories in between so when we say entrepreneur we are talking across the board and the process of scaling just understand that one one size does not fit all so for the solo entrepreneur the scaling process instead of creating a job for yourself to do the scaling process is all relationship based and people have this concept of i start a business i'm an entrepreneur i go to the bank i get a loan and i use that loan to pay people to do a job for my business so that i can please my customers um, and then things might not work out and then they have a, a business with employees that are not getting paid and there's this everything can just go horribly wrong so as a solo entrepreneur do yourself a favor understand how financial capital and human capital real people how they can be used in the same way where it is beneficial to everyone involved so if i want to scale a project instead of going to the bank and going please mr bank manager give me a loan um spending that money i would rather to the people that I've built relationships with and go, hey, I, I'm starting a project. This is something that actually might be right up your alley. Do you want to get involved? And either look at the project and they're like, actually, this would been really benefit my business to be involved in this space. I would love to be part of this project. Now there are two. And then you can go to number three and go, we're doing this project together. Um, would you like to get involved? Can we grow this? Can we monetize this? Can we build this? And there were three and so on and so forth and the next thing you know there is a team around you of people that are united that have one focus on what's being built how it's being built the culture's already in the space and you haven't spent anything you're welcome yeah so scaling from social um 
capital. If you want to know more about that, Peter's pretty much your person to talk to. Like he operates like I've never seen anyone operate. Um, Carolyn, really excited to have you come back into the conversation. Yeah, I just wanted to speak to the culture aspect again. Um, because that's a lot of the work that I do. I work a lot with companies on their culture. And one of the things that I do with them, and I learned this from a, a man called Mark Analdi, who built an amazing business called Possible Health, um, is to make um, to, to make a purpose statement that goes, in everything we do, we believe in. And then you finish that sentence. In everything we do, we believe in. And, and I find that relevant to scaling right now because I think once you are clear on that purpose, once you're clear on what you really believe in, then it's important to ask yourself, does that really go with scaling right now? You know, like, will, will we still be able to do this when we scale? And even in the way that we scale, you know, like, can we tra stay true to what we're really about? Or are we going to neglect some of our core core values, some of our deepest purpose if, if we, you know, um, scale too fast? Yeah. Thank you, Carolyn. That's very valuable. Um, that purpose statement is an exercise that Mr. Levy has put us through. And I mean, that's basically how we built Explore Project. It was, again, I didn't yeah. understand why we were doing it. <laughs> I, 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 will admit, I will admit, it it was very difficult to, when certain opportunities came up, to go, does this opportunity actually line up with who we are, what we're doing, what our values are. What our purpose and is. Sometimes and that, sometimes that opportunity is just so exciting, but it just doesn't line up at all. Um, it doesn't matter how exciting it is. If it doesn't line up um, with your core values, with, with your culture, with your, um, if it's all of a sudden, it's just a financial decision. You're looking at the financial, but just beware look at that space and go, is this, uh, that's why I love what you just said, Carolyn, how it must line up because if it doesn't line up, it's not going to work or it might work, but you destroy the culture of your space Which in means it one work. silly decision. Mm -hmm. You may get wealthy in the process, but it's not going to last because creating and doing other moves, you've destroyed your culture and things just stop working. So. Uh, this is where I think if you are an entrepreneur or a space with employees and you have created culture, if you're putting culture first, you're putting your people first. Your people get you to where you need to go. You Not, don't build a business, you build people, you build, they build the business. They build the business. So this is something we actually learned from Stephen Levy. This is a statement he's made many times. And I think that's so true. Um, if I look at an experience that I had, even as a as a really young child, and some of you will have heard this and some of you won't, where I had this experience of going with my father to uh, um, a really large business that he used to be the production manager for. And I, I didn't really understand what happened at the time, but I look back at it now and I think it's absolutely incredible because he was the kind of man that walked around with his own created culture. The, the, the company didn't have that culture. In his space, he created his own and he was the production manager. So he put people first and he built those relationships and he put his people first. When there were uh, protests, he would stand with his people because they're his people. Um, you know, if they had problems at home, they could come to him because they were his people. Um, and we left Cape Town and we went up to Johannesburg or that area and we uh, stayed there for a good five or six years. When we came down to visit, he just wanted to pop in and say hi to some of the people he used to work with. And I was a child and we arrived and we went into reception and then we were guided to an office where we got to meet the um, one of his previous workers who was now the production manager. And he was like, hold on a second, but about 60% of the workforce that was here when you were here are still here. Would you like to go and meet them? They would love to see you. So we were walked through to the factory floor 
and the entire factory, um, and this was a company by the name of Plessy, so it's about the same size as um, Telcom, um, the entire factory came to a standstill. And about 350, 400 people um, surrounded one man all just to get a piece of saying hello. Um, it For me, that was that was a man that understood that the people came first and because he put them first, the production level was insanely high. So that's why, and to this day, that is why one of the things that we believe, the coffee comes first, business comes later. Simple concept, but it works. Thank you, Peter. I absolutely adore that story. And I, it does not come naturally for some of us, like me. <laughs> It is very difficult to build the people first, but that's why we have people like you and Mr. Levy to learn from. So thank you so much. Um, yes, Mr. Um, Levy. To share story based, and Carolyn is a, um, kind of uh, alluded to culture and how important it is. And there's a company I'm working with, obviously I can't name them, but uh, they're really successful and they are growing at a rapid rate and we keep to i've been working with them for about three or four years and they keep we keep talking about every time i say to me that your your systems and your processes are not supporting your growth and he keeps he says to you even though i don't want to get corporate so you don't have to get corporate your systems and processes can support your growth your culture because they have a very strong it's not a family business, but they have a very strong family culture. And I said to him, we'll call him John for now. John, you don't have to make your culture corporate. You can still keep it a family culture, but you have to have the systems and processes to support that family to now service the market like you did. So, because, so I think it's also, um, when you speak clear, what do, you know, the difference between Putting in systems and process or anything, resource to support the growth, but you don't have to change your culture. So I thought I'd just share that and then I'm going to have to go into that. Uh, I love that. I Thank mean, you so brilliant. much. Thank you, Mr. Levy. Ladies and gents, this is the best conversation ever. I want to remind you, these awesome humans, we have their LinkedIn links in the description below. If you feel the need to connect with any of them or we'll just say thank you for the amazing advice shared, please connect with them. They're absolutely incredible, each an expert in their own you know, field, which is just, I'm so grateful to have them mm. around me right now. Um, also, we're going to be moving on to the next piece of the show. So quickly, what I want to do with everyone on the show, um, for those of you that have been watching the show for a while, you'll know Joanne Warehouse from uh, Joanne Warehouse Virtual Photography. She's our virtual photographer. She took all the photos that you saw in our beginning a song. So Kempton made the song, uh, Joanne put the photos, and then Summerville put it all together in video format. Um, so they're all amazing. But Joanne has asked us if we could all please ask her a question about virtual photography, because she's launching her new book like very soon. And as support, she needs people asking her questions about virtual photography. So I thought, what a good idea to trap you online while you're live and can't go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so we can all make these videos together. How fun would that be? So I'm going to highlight you one person at a time. And if you can please ask just one question about virtual photography, like anything you want to know, literally anything, please go ahead and um, ask that. So I think I'm just going to call out your name and then you can ask your question. I'll spotlight you and then she can please, uh, she'll be using this footage in her lodge, in her materials. So this would be an opportunity. I like that. Showcase how entrepreneurs from around the world support each other. can support each other and actually do something together. <laughs> So, um, at, oh, also follow the coffee shop um, layout. So as soon as you ask your question, just say your name and your business name. And then she can include that in her marketing material, if you guys don't mind. That'll be amazing. And that would be a good time to probably think of a question to ask. Yes. Let's put Rita on the spot first. She's good with questions. Rita, I'm going to spotlight you first. What is your question? 
Um, Nestine, I think my question would be, uh, let's make it technical. How the hell do you do that? Sitting <laughs> on the other side of the earth and you can do a photo shoot right across the, uh, the, the globe. Really, how can you do that? Rita Skuman, Coaching with Heart. Thank you, Rita. You're an amazing sport. Let's do Mr. Levy next. On the spot, Mr. Levy. Yeah, it's it fascinates me hard. I want to know from Jan, how do you, I can understand headshots and profile shots and that, that I've seen her do and are amazing. How do you simulate a real life environment in a virtual space and with a, with a photograph? Thank you, Mr. Levy. Now someone that is amazing at improv, the creative man himself, Hendrik. Oh, ah. Um, when we did that photo shoot here at the Patia Ranch on that day, we were all together. We had somebody hold the, the, the cell phone to take the, the pictures that she directed from the other side. What if you're on your own and there's nobody to hold the camera? How do you take the photograph there? Hendrik that from Bad Media. That is a good one. Thank you so much, Hendrik. Let's do Kenton. Kenton, you're in the spotlight. Hello, Joanne. My question for you is how can virtual photography rival traditional photography in artistic settings? I'm Kenton with Peach Jam Records. Brilliant. And let's do Carolyn. Carolyn, you're in the spotlight. Um, yeah, so my question is very simple. It's just what is the most challenging thing about virtual photography? And um, so what challenges you the most, Joanne? And it's uh, Carolyn Seidler from the Impact Collective. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Carolyn. And Peter, it's your turn. You are in the spotlight. Okay, so Joanne, um, we had a great conversation about how I do not like cameras. They make me feel nervous. Um, and we experienced your photo shoot and it was absolutely brilliant and i didn't feel nervous at all so my question to you joanne is how did you do that and who are you i'm just preparing myself in front of the camera hold on i just realized i'm being watched <laughs> no i'm kidding uh, that would make me peter co-founder of export project oh brilliant um joanne my question for you is how can we use virtual photography as a team building tool I totally stole that from Peter. I see the opportunity. I'm a scene from Explore Project Entrepreneurial Haven. Um, ladies and gents, this has been just absolutely incredible. You have been amazing. Uh, whether you on Facebook, YouTube, or on the screen, it's been such a fun, amazing time. I think I continue to say constantly on LinkedIn this year, um, you know, people used to say money makes the world go around. I think it's entrepreneurs having coffee makes the world go around these days and if i'm going to be having coffee with anybody like wow i mean the caliber of the people in the room right now i'm so so thankful to be having coffee with you guys you're amazing one last thing um Carolyn, hendrick i don't know if you've met each other yet please have a cup of coffee yeah we nice have a uh, we have one set up already yes stunning um Okay, ladies and gents, that is our hour for this week. It's been so amazing to have you on the show. Please remember to join us every single week. Also remember to share, like, and hit the bell and comment and stuff like on YouTube. Try and help us get the show out there. I think it's so important that we reach as many entrepreneurs as possible. Let them know that there is a space where they can come every single week of charge and they can just connect with some of the best in the business can learn from the best in the business and it's a space there's a safe space that takes the fear out of entrepreneurship um, and just so that you know um if you're out there and you have a question that needs to be answered well there are a group of people in this space that are just well let's speak from our experience let's put let's put brains together let's solve problems so if you have a problem and you have a question let us know mm -hmm. let us know and we can put our brains together 
we put our heads together, we can pretty much solve anything. So with the audience, if there is somebody that has said something that you can relate to, that's somebody that you just want to talk to, somebody that interests you, links will be in the description. You're welcome. And if you're one of the most fun, authentic, caring entrepreneurs in the world, well, then you got to talk to me and Peter about becoming part of our core network, because that's what we're building. We want the 500 most fun, authentic, caring entrepreneurs in the world by our sides, creating profit share projects together, collaborating and literally pushing each other forward. That's what we're all about. But that's it for today, ladies and gents. Thank you so much for being here. We absolutely adore you. We hope that this show has given you that oomph and that inspiration and the thing that you need to get through the rest of the week. I know it has. You're amazing. Remember how incredible you are just because you are an entrepreneur. You fight the good fight every single day. You are what our economy needs right now. You are the hope in the world and we absolutely adore you. May all your wildest entrepreneurial dreams come true. Catch you on the flip one. Bye. Thanks, Justine. Love you.